For those of you with short attention spans or somewhere to go real quick, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of what we're gonna do today. We're gonna take some wood, we're gonna burn it, we're gonna put some mica powder on it, we're gonna spread it around real nice, we're gonna wipe it back off, and we're gonna clear coat it with some clear coat. I feel like this is one of these videos, uh, like I've done many times in the past, where I get comments that say, oh, you took too long, and you way overthink things, and you put too much detail into it. Well, there you go. Now, I've also got an overwhelming amount of you guys who actually appreciate the detail and the time I take to actually tell you about all the little juicy ins and outs of this whole ordeal. So today, I'm gonna go through everything I know so far about what I'm calling Shishugi Bon 2.0. What's going on guys, I'm Jody, this is Inspire Woodcraft. Today we're talking Shishugi Bon 2.0, and I'm gonna tell you everything I know so far. So over the last couple weeks, I've done a ton of testing and experimenting and just trying to figure out different ways of doing this one particular style. Now this is a true Shishugi Bon, before I get yet another commenter that says it's not Shishugi Bon, it looks like crap. Eh, the looking like crap part is your opinion and you're entitled to that, but this is true Shishugi Bon and the fact that originally planks were caught on fire and burnt to a crisp and then they were cooled and then they were hung up. There was never any brushing, there was never any staining or oils or anything else. If you go back all the way back, at least as far as I've ever been able to find out, it was simply charred and hung up. Now to be fair, this isn't meant to be the next wall cladding or anything, at least not yet. I haven't figured out how to make it be on a bigger scale, but this is actually true Shishugi Bon. We've just upgraded it. And true to form, I am using today a piece of cedar. I don't have cypress where I live. And pine. So those are the two woods that we're primarily going to focus on. A third would be something called Akoya. Akoya is a modified pine. This is actually the last I have of what stock I did have. It's a modified pine. It kind of is a softwood with hardwood traits, if you will. It's not very easy to get a hold of. I'll try to leave a link so those of you that are interested can learn more about it. It's really awesome, and I wish I had truckloads of it. It's really durable in the sense that it doesn't warp and twist and move like normal wood does. It makes it perfect for projects like this because you don't have to worry about it burning and then moving on you, which we've all burnt you know, a cedar fence board or something and had it cup. And to answer that question, if you burn the other side, it'll pull the cup back out. Anyways, so today we're gonna sample cedar, we're gonna sample pine. I think those two things are pretty readily available for most people. Now the other thing we need to look at is the burn type. Now for a long time, I've been under the suspicion, but I've never tested, that depending on how you burn depends on how the surface ends up. That, that's hard to explain. But what I mean is, if you use a small propane bottle and you apply a small amount of heat over a longer period of time, do you get a different surface than if you apply a large, hot amount of heat to the surface for a shorter amount of time? The answer is yes. As you can see here, I tried it both ways. This first piece is cedar. As you can see, we have these kind of small little pockets and small little grooves. And then we have these much bigger bulbous islands of char with much bigger cracks and valleys in between them. It's the only way I can figure out how to explain it. That's on the cedar and the, and the pine reacted the exact same way. When I use the small torch on it, you got small details. When you use the big torch on it, you got bigger details. Now, the Akoya is my absolute favorite pattern when it's charred. It gives it that uh, classic alligator look that people like to say. Um, but the pine, this pine at least, uh, worked out really well. And I don't know if I said it already, but if you get your pine, make sure that you get one with a lot of room between the growth rings because that's gonna make a big difference. So you can kind of tell the difference of the texture already. We're gonna be working mainly with the big high heat surface. You can tell cedar has this bulbous type of effect when it burns, where pine is more of a very flat type of surface. And like I said, the Akoya stays the same way. But what I like about the Akoya, and this isn't a sales pitch for Akoya, I just really like the stuff, is it stays hard even after it burns. So you get a lot of char on your finger. Um, cedar, cedar's much more fragile and it's, it's very soft and almost powder-like when you burn it. And you'll see in a second, it can kind of cause some problems. Pine leaves that flat surface, but it's still 
kind of fragile, especially if you get little pockets that burn a little more than others. But with the Akoya, I mean, almost no soot comes off on your hand. It almost leaves like a glossy surface right after you char it. It's pretty crazy stuff. Okay, enough about that. The stuff I've been using in the shop for my experiments includes roll of paper towels, bottle of water, some spray oil-based polyurethane, some CA glue, and of course our propane torch. And of course, a bigger propane torch. And I almost forgot about mica powder. I previously have been using this brand Eye Candy. That's what I've used for some resin pours and stuff. And it's a really good company. I really like their colors, but I didn't have any like yellows and greens and blues that I really wanted. And so I kind of switched it up. I went with this Dibble Dabble company. I know it's a goofy name, but it's a really good product. And if you're new to mica powders, I am totally recommending this product. I will have a link down below. It will be an affiliate link. So if you do make a purchase through those affiliate links, that does help the channel out. But this kit that they have has bottles instead of the little plastic bags, which makes it a lot easier. And they're actually shake pour bottles. So you open one side up and you can kind of sprinkle it on there. You open the other side up and you can pour it on there. Now we're gonna start with white and we're gonna start with cedar. And to spread it around, I actually just use a business card and try and work it into the cracks and the crevices and fill all those little voids up as much as I can with the mica powder. Now herein lies the problem with cedar. As you scrape the surface, you're also gonna scrape some of that char off because it is so soft and delicate and you're gonna end up mixing it in with the mica powder. This can kinda of cause a problem if you're not careful. You have to really slow down when it comes to cedar. Now originally I started wiping it off like you see here and I would wet a paper towel and I would just use the paper towel and just try and wipe it right back off the surface. But especially with cedar, it'll actually blend that mica powder down into that charred surface, which I thought was a bad thing. As it turns out, if you do it intentionally, you actually come out with something that's really cool. Now to avoid it, the best thing to do, and it's tedious, but is to just get that wet paper towel, wet your finger on it and actually pull it off and do it by hand. And then you'll be able to actually peel all of it back because it'll stick to your hand more than it'll stick to the wood. It'll still leave a little bit of residue, but it's not that bad. But as you can see, if you do it intentionally and carefully, you can actually dab that paper towel in the mica powder and rub it on the surface and actually paint the surface of that char and the mica powder will embed itself down onto that top layer. You could also do the same thing where you do that top layer, but then you leave mica powder down in the cracks and now you have a two-tone effect. In this case, we have sort of a silvery exterior and then we have a buildup of a silvery white in the cracks and crevices and actually turns out really cool. Now moving on to the pine, I chose to use green for this one and I'm just gonna pour some on and try and get it all worked into those cracks as much as possible. Just moving back and forth and just kind of troweling it in. And to wipe it off, we can do the exact same thing. Now to wipe it back off with this, because the pine leaves such a flat surface instead of all those bumps on it like the cedar, most of the time you can get away with just wiping it off with a paper towel. And then you can come back and just touch it up by hand. I actually tried experimenting with using the paper towel on a piece of plywood and using it almost like a sanding block to actually just wipe right across the surface and then touch up by hand and that actually worked really, really well. Now, of course, we have to figure out a way to lock the mica powder down into those grooves so it doesn't go blowing out all over the place. And in the beginning, I was primarily only using CA glue. So I would take some medium CA glue, actually I tried thin as well. I would pour some on the surface, I would use a business card to spread it out and trowel it and smooth it out similar to how you would use epoxy or something. The super glue will not only go in and seal the char, but it'll soak up into that mica powder and it'll lock that down in there too. You're gonna need several coats of it. Now I know some of you are thinking that's horrible. I don't wanna breathe CA fumes and I totally understand. I was actually having some issues with it myself. So I'm not going to necessarily recommend it, but I am gonna say, that's one way of doing it. I tried, I believe, with this purple piece. I coated it with the CA glue, and then I actually used, after it dried, of course, the oil-based poly over the top of it. And I don't know, it's been a week or so. I haven't had any issues with it. So I don't think there's any kind of chemical reaction that happens. I think it's totally fine. Of course, I need more experimenting time in order to find out for sure uh, the longevity of that. But what I actually found out is that if you spray the poly from up high and let it just settle onto the material after several coats, of course, it'll actually build up enough so that you can lock that in. It'll seal up the char, it'll seal up the mica powder, and it'll all stay put and it won't come off. From personal experience, spray poly on a charred surface, you need a lot and a lot and a lot. So what you might be able to do is come back 
after the spray and use a wipe on or a brush on. I don't know if you're supposed to mix those two. I actually, I'm actually not sure about that at all. I also tried pulling up a brush on and I tried brushing it on. Go figure, the brushes just dig right into the grooves that pulls all the mica powder out, so I don't recommend that. But I did take some epoxy and put it on one of these, I think this purple one, and let it pool up. And epoxy self-settling, just like the CAA glue, uh, self-leveling, I'm sorry. And so it'll do a good job of sealing that up. And what a lot of people don't know is when you use epoxy with charred wood, you need to seal it just like you would if you were making, say, a river table or something. A lot of people skip that step even in raw wood, but you're not supposed to. You're supposed to put a seal coat on first. It's gonna give something for the top layers of epoxy to grab onto, and it's gonna hold up over time a lot better. You're gonna have a lot less issues. So you'd have to do the same thing with this. I didn't because I didn't wanna wait three more weeks to get this video out to you guys. So I just put the one layer on, but even after the one layer, I'm not getting any purple on my hands. It seems that the epoxy has, even after one layer, at least locked in the mica powder which is our main concern. Now, after that, you could build up layers. But the quickest, easiest way i found is to just shoot it with the poly, go from up above, or at least from far away, and just slowly start building up those coats. And that seems to do the trick. Now, I tried it on some other pieces as well. I tried a piece of hemlock. The hemlock didn't work very well, and I also tried on the cooler burned side of cedar, and that turned out to be an absolute catastrophe. The char all completely fell apart and broke up and mixed in with the mica powder and it just it just didn't work. So I'm not gonna recommend that. I also tried the wipe down method with more of the high temp side. It seems to do really well with the cedar for blending in and making that top coat. It's kind of a cool deal having those two different colors and I actually didn't know that until I started filming for this video, so that's kind of cool. And then of course to get multiple colors on one piece, you have to just do it in sections and that's what I've done both with the red, white, and blue, and this rainbow one here, and I had another one that I did today. And that's basically just taking one section at a time. Of course, I don't even know if you guys can see that. I have some other samples here, like this blue and white one. This is actually a piece of a Koya that I spray painted. And I spray painted the whole surface, then I came back much, much later and use the mica powder on it. The mica powder sort of impregnates into the paint, even though it's a gloss paint, it's kind of weird, but it does give that two-tone effect. That smooth surface isn't going to be, it's not going to work as well as say the cedar would because the cedar will absorb all that. But again, the cedar's more fragile, the pine's flatter, you have options. That's what's kind of cool about it. I'm really curious to see what else we could really use this on. It'd be cool to see like a chair or something. I think this look is really neat. I think it's different. I think, I mean, it's definitely something I haven't seen before, but I think it needs to be used as an accent or in moderation. I can't see, I can't see like a coffee table necessarily being done with this. I guess maybe it's because I just wouldn't want that coffee table in my house, but I'm sure it would be good for someone. The problem would be, like I've said before, what is that coffee table made out of? Do we know the species of wood? Because if that coffee table is made out of a hardwood, it's probably not gonna work too well. What you could do if you wanted to is you could make like an accent wall with this and I think that might look pretty cool. Or even if you did a full char wall and you did just a few little accent pieces of this setup in there, I think it would look pretty neat. And depending on the lighting, when it hits it, it almost kind of glows, where in the darker areas, it won't. That's kind of the one problem with this. I noticed this blue that I have here is absolutely electric when the light hits it, but if the light's not hitting it, it kind of flattens out. So anyways, I'm rambling as usual. See, I gotta give something for the negative commenters to bitch about. That is everything I know about Shishugumon 2.0. If you guys have any more questions, if you have suggestions, if I didn't explain something well enough, leave me a comment. And as always, I'll do my best to get back to you guys. I'll leave a link for the Akoya because I know you guys don't want me to talk about it anymore, so I'll let you do the looking into. And I'll also leave a link for the mica powders in case you're interested in that. Let me know if you guys try this out and what your successes are. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next video.